Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Amber here. Today we're going to continue looking at Ruth chapters 2 and 3. I hope that you took my challenge yesterday and read through the book of Ruth. If you haven't or are just joining us, you can choose to read through the book of Ruth and know a little bit more what we're talking about these last three days. So in Ruth um, chapters two and three, um, Ruth and Naomi are back in Bethlehem, but they have no men to provide for them. And so Ruth is going to go out into a field and collect barley so that they have food to survive off of. And she goes and she randomly picks a field um, and she doesn't know at the time that it's Boaz's field. And so she spends the whole day gathering food and Boaz comes out and sees her and asks his men who this woman is. Uh, and he tell, the men tell him, this is Ruth, she's Naomi's daughter-in-law and she's been working all day trying to provide. And so Boaz goes to Ruth and says, hey, stay in this field uh, where you're protected. None of my men will touch you or bother you. Um, and if you need water, get water. At lunchtime, he provides food for her and gives her an abundance to be able to take back home to Naomi. She works all day and, and gathers an abundance for them and takes it back home. And Naomi is shocked and says, what field did you go to? And so Ruth tells her, I went in this guy Boaz's field and he was so generous and, and caring towards me. And Naomi says, he's one of our redeemers. So a redeemer in that time was someone who was a close relative who could marry um, a woman and they would have children, but it, wouldn't, it would continue the line of the first husband. And so... Uh, a month goes by in between the two chapters and Naomi tells Ruth, hey, Boaz is down threshing wheat. After he goes to sleep, go down there, uncover his feet and lay at his feet and he'll tell you what to do. This seems very weird, but it was basically uh, Ruth's way of asking Boaz to marry her. Um, it was a way of humbling herself before him saying, I need you to help me by marrying me. And so Boaz wakes up in the middle of the night and there's this woman laying at his feet. He asks who it is. She says, Ruth, and says what she wants. And he says, go back to sleep and in the morning I'll take care of it. Chapter four is how he redeems Ruth. Um, but what we see when you read the two chapters is you see how both Boaz and Ruth have godly character. They are compassionate and caring and serve and hardworking, and they reflect God's character. Um, and something really cool <clears throat> that Boaz says uh, in Ruth 2, uh, verse 12, says, The Lord repay you for what you have done. He's talking to Ruth. A full reward be given to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. So he is complimenting her and asking God to bless her and take care of her which is really cool because God actually uses Boaz to make that prayer come true. God uses Boaz to redeem Ruth and take care of her and Naomi's needs for the rest of their life. Um, but you can see how they have godly character and they choose to follow God's way and his plan, even though the majority of the people during that time didn't. Again, this was written and took place during the time of the judges, which all throughout Judges, it says, and people did what was right during their, in their own eyes. So the majority of the people weren't following God, weren't doing life God's way, but Ruth and Boaz are. They are living godly life and reflecting his character. And so I want to encourage you guys to follow God and live his character and reflect his heart, even if the world is telling you to do the opposite. Even if your friends and family are telling you you don't have to follow God, following God's way is going to bless you and bless those around you. Because Ruth and Boaz chose to follow God's character and his way for life, it blessed them. And also they got to be a part of God's redemption story for all of history. And so I encourage you guys, 
follow God and love Him with everything that you have. No matter what the world is saying, choose to follow God and follow His way of life because His plan is greater than anything that we can desire for Him ourself and His way is better. So surrender your plans, your desires, your thoughts to Him and let Him lead your life and see how He blesses you through that. Have a great day.